You know, when I, uh, I'm going to talk to single people. So you married people, you can listen in, okay? You can listen in and say, wow, I wish I knew that before, but you're just listening in. You're just spectators. So if you're single, never been married, widowed, used to be married, divorced, used to be married, you know, I'm talking to you people. And when I talk to single people in the church, I often hear them say, you know, I, I can't figure women out. I just can't figure women out. Or they say, well, I can't figure men out. And when I press them a little bit to try to explain, they usually answer, well, I just don't know what they want. What do women want? Or what do men want? Man, I've given this some, some thought and examined men and women in the Bible who found each other. And I have a couple of answers to the question, what do Christian men, what do Christian women want? I want to start with the women because it seems that men tend to be more confused on this issue than women are. So brothers, in response to the question, what do Christian women want? I give you several possible answers from the Bible. Number one, a Christian woman wants a man, not a boy. Amen, sisters? The Bible says that a Christian woman is God's favor or God's blessing to a Christian man. Proverbs 18.22 says, the man who finds a wife finds a treasure and he receives a favor from the Lord. Now, a Christian woman has a lot to offer and is not about to waste it on a teenager in a man's body. You know, there's a time to be a boy and play with boys' things and boys' toys, but a Christian woman is not a plaything. Joseph, Mary's husband, was such a man. He loved her and he wanted to marry her, nothing special there. But when Mary conceived in a miraculous way by the Holy Spirit and Joseph was told to marry her despite his hurt, despite his confusion, this is where we discover the real man in Joseph. He married her, he accepted the child that she carried, he obeyed God and left his hometown and left his business to hide in Egypt in order to protect this child, which was not his child. He even refrained from sexual intimacy with Mary while she carried the child. We know he loved her when they first became engaged, but the man in him continued to love and care for her despite the baggage that came with her new circumstances. He knew what better, what worse, what different actually meant in a relationship. You know, any boy can take a wife, but it takes a man to take a wife along with all the things that a new wife brings into marriage. Christian women want a real man, not just a boy pretending to be a man. Number two, Christian women want men who are both spiritual and manly. You know, David, Israel's second king, was a good example of this. He was a soldier. He was a leader. He was well trained in the ways of war and politics. He was very much grounded in this world and his place and his role in this world. Yet the Bible says that he was a man after God's own heart in Acts 13, 22, meaning that he was able and eager to worship God, meaning he was willing to sacrifice for his faith, meaning he was ready to change 
admit fault, weep for others, and humble himself before God. He was a man's man, but he maintained spiritual priorities. For example, he could direct a war and a nation, but he was the first to lead his people to worship and serve God. He had tremendous spiritual insight even though he made terrible mistakes because of his human appetites and weaknesses. You know, a Christian woman wants a real man who is neither conflicted in his masculinity or ashamed of his faith and spirituality. She wants a person who can be both a man able to make his way in the world and a spiritual leader in his own home and in the church. You know, I, I suppose the women here today could add several more things to the list that I've just given. I, I just suspect that the wheels are turning. You know, oh, this, that, what's he going to say? How, many, how long's the list? But I'm just going to mention one more thing that I believe Christian women want. Christian women want men who will make them happy, not just make them laugh. See the difference? Humor is an attractive quality in men, but a sense of humor does not guarantee happiness. In Solomon's love poem, Song of Solomon, the Shulamite woman that Solomon is engaged to marry talks about the things that make a godly woman happy. For example, she mentions a purified character. And if you have your Bibles, I'm going to read out of Song of Solomon, chapter one, verse two and three. So, so what does she look for in that man to make her happy? First thing, a purified character, verse one and two, uh, chapter one, verses two and three actually. She says, may he kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for your love is better than wine, for your oils have a pleasing fragrance. Listen now, your name is like purified oil, therefore the maidens love you. The young woman compares Solomon's character, his name, to the lovely fragrance of perfume that is experienced by others, not just herself. A man who is well thought of because of his integrity and his goodness and his kindness, who is loved by others is a joy to his wife. A man whose character is continually purified from sin by God is also a joy to his wife and a blessing to his home and a blessing to his community. Second thing that we find in Song of Solomon, go down to verse five. It says, I am black but lovely, O daughters of Jerusalem, like the tents of Kedar, like the curtains of Solomon. Do not stare at me because I am swarthy, for the sun has burned me. My mother's sons were angry with me. They made me caretaker of the vineyards, but I have not taken care of my own vineyard. So this is the Shulamite woman, that young woman once again who's speaking. And in this verse, this woman uh, expresses the idea that she feels insecure about the way she looks compared to the other women in the royal court. Solomon was a king, there were women in the court. This woman is feeling you know, less than good about herself because of her complexion. She is a country girl. She is a dark tan compared to the white-skinned rich girls at the palace, if you wish. Now I want you to read chapter two, verse one. See what happens, see how her demeanor changes. Chapter two, verse one, it says, I am the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valleys. Notice how she feels better about herself. She feels better about herself using a term given to her by who do you think? By her beloved. Now in verse chapter two, uh, chapter two, verse 16 rather, let's keep reading the development of her self-esteem and self-image in chapter two, uh, verse six rather. She says, let his left hand be under my head and his right hand embrace me. She's expressed the idea of possessiveness and assurance as her confidence grows. And then in verse 16 she says, my beloved is mine and I am his. 
He pastures His flock among the lilies. Again, the progression of her confidence growing in Him, that she belongs only to Him and He belongs only to her. And then I want you to go forward now to chapter seven in verse 10. And she says, same, same woman talking about the same thing, she says, I am my beloved's and his desire is for me. So in chapter seven, verse 10, after they are married, she is absolutely secure in the fact that she is the only one he loves. You know, a man who cannot or will not make the effort to make his wife feel secure cannot make her happy either. That's the point. Christian women want men who desire to make them happy, not just make them laugh. It's one sure way to know if someone truly loves you and is in love with you. And that is, there is the desire to make the other person happy before making yourself happy. And so a Christian woman wants a man who is willing to do what it takes to make her happy. You know, men, nowadays it seems, well, always, I remember when I was much younger, we spent a lot of time and money trying to look like men with certain clothing or cologne or attitude, when in reality, men should spend a greater effort at being men of character men of faith, men of commitment. In the end, this is what Christian women want. Perhaps young men are not finding the women they want because they themselves are not the men that attract these type of women. Even with those men who are married, perhaps the reason their wives are not the Christian women they'd like them to be is because their own conduct provides no incentive for their wives to grow into mature Christian women. Of course, the discussion goes both ways, doesn't it? Men also want someone special, and Christian women don't always get this idea either, so let's kind of reverse it now. What do Christian men want? Well, Christian men want women who are really Christians. You know, one problem with many of today's Christian women is that you can't tell them apart from non-believing women. They talk the same way, they act and dress the same way, they go to all the same places as all the non-believers. Many think that unless they act and look like worldly women, they won't be attractive to men. So they do all the worldly things, uh, in moderation maybe, so that they'll be open to all the possibilities. But a Christian man wants a woman who wears Christ, not Christian Dior. In the Bible, we have the story of Rebecca, a wonderful example of a beautiful woman who received a man based on her purity and her goodness and not just her looks. When Abraham's servant was sent to look for a wife for Abraham's son Isaac, he was told that the woman who would be of service to him, who would be a stranger in a foreign land, she'd be the one. And so this time go to Genesis chapter 24. And verse 15. Chapter 24 verse 15 tells the story of when Abraham's servant first encountered Rebekah. So we're not going to read the whole thing, but let's just read a few, a few verses. Chapter 24 in Genesis, beginning in verse 15, it says, before he, that's the servant, he had traveled a long way, he had entered this village. It says, before he had finished speaking, behold, Rebekah, who was born to Bethuel, the son of Milcah, the wife of Abraham's brother Nahor, came out with her jar on her shoulder. The girl was very beautiful, a virgin, and no man had had relations with her. And she went down to the spring and filled her jar and came up. Then the servant ran to meet her and said, please, let me drink a little water from your jar. She said, drink, my lord. And she quickly lowered her jar to her hand and gave him a drink. 
Now when she had finished giving him a drink, she said, I will draw also for your camels until they have finished drinking. So she quickly emptied her jar into the trough and ran back to the well to draw, and she drew for all his camels. Note in this account that there is no mention of her clothing. No mention of her jewelry, her hair, her style. Only her genuine spiritual nature and kindness are allowed to shine through. After she returned to meet and eventually marry Isaac, the Bible says that he immediately loved her. Christian men know the difference between a woman acting like a Christian and a real Christian woman. Number two, what do Christian men want? Christian man wants a woman who knows how to be beautiful on the inside as well as on the outside. You know, men are proud. As a matter of fact, according to surveys about what men want, the number two thing on their list is a woman whose looks they can be proud of. Now you may not like this about men, and it may seem immature, but this is the way most men are. The problem here, however, is that many women think that the way to produce this look is to continually concentrate on their exterior beauty. But the secret here is that outer beauty begins on the inside and it works its way out. You know, makeup and hairstyle, these things only highlight the innate beauty that radiates from a godly woman. You know, men want to admire their wives. And when they boast about them to other men, they rarely talk about their makeup. I got news for you girls, when guys get together and they talk about their wives, they never, I've never heard it, they never talk about how tall, how small, how big, how thin, that, the, there's never any mention of that. There's no mention, oh and my wife, you know, she uses cover girl. When men get together and talk about their wives, especially Christian men, their discussion centers on the spiritual qualities that the women that God has blessed them with have and how undeserving they are to have them. And I'm saying this as a man who knows what men say when they talk about their girlfriends or their wives. No matter what they look like, which is rarely mentioned, they always talk and boast about and admire their woman's inner beauty. And the best example of this kind of admiration is the husband who talks about his beloved wife in Proverbs chapter 31. If you'd like to read along with me, go to chapter 31 of Proverbs and we'll read there. Familiar passage, but so in context of what we're talking about this morning. He says, Proverbs 31, verse 10, an excellent wife, who can find? For her worth is far above jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good, not evil, all the days of her life. She looks for wool and flax and works with her hands in delight. She is like a merchant ship. She brings her food from afar. She rises also while it is still night and gives food to her household and portions to her maidens. She considers a field and buys it. From her earnings she plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She senses that her gain is good. Her lamp does not go out at night. She stretches out her hands to the, dist uh, to the distaff and her hands grasp the spindle. She extends her hands to the poor and she stretches out her hands to the needy. She's not afraid of the snow for her household for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She makes coverings for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies belts to the tradesmen. 
Strength and dignity are her clothing and she smiles at the future. She opens her mouth in wisdom and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and bless her, her husband also, and he praises her, saying, many daughters have done nobly, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the product of her hands and let her works praise her in the gates. I read that to say the following. This is the passage that I read to my wife 35 years ago on our wedding day, which was just a few days ago. And I read that to her because I saw or saw the potential of all those things in her on that day. And even to this day, all those things are true. The only difference is that 35 years later, our children say exactly the same thing about their mother. One last thing about men and what they want. Christian men want women who can help them become better men. Christian men want women who can help them to become better Christian men. A man's life, physically and spiritually, is incomplete without an intimate relationship with a woman. Interesting to note that the Bible calls Eve a helpmeet, a helpmeet, Genesis 2.18. Now the Hebrew word here translated helpmeet or helper doesn't mean a helper like an assistant or an employee. You know, my wife is a helpmeet. You know, hey, you want to go get the thing over there? Yeah, you want to bring me a Coca-Cola on your way by? Not that helpmeet. Not that kind of helper, not a gopher. The original Hebrew word azar meant helping someone in need. The exact same word is used to denote the idea of rescue. In Psalm 30 verse 10, David says, O Lord, be my helper. Same word. The idea is that Eve was created to come to Adam's rescue, to rescue him from loneliness, to rescue him, um, excuse me, to complete his humanity, to help manage the creation, to create sexual union and procreate children, to share in the knowledge and the joy of the Lord. It's a great thing to have the joy in the Lord. You're sitting at home and you're thinking, I'm so glad to be a Christian. Isn't it a wonderful thing? Lord, you've done so many great things for me. But it's a whole lot better to say to the person next to you, your wife, your beloved, isn't the Lord wonderful? And she says, Amen, my brother. Eve enabled Adam to be a complete man. And you know what? Men are still looking for this in women, and Christian men in particular search for women who can help them fulfill their character in Christ. The Bible is full of examples of such women. Ruth rescued Boaz, from loneliness and old age. Abigail rescued David from a fiery temper and an immature pride. Rachel rescued Jacob from the solitude of his exile. Lise rescued Michael from the wreckage of a wasted life. Christian men need women who are strong enough in their own faith so they can build up what they are lacking in Christ. Any man who finds a woman who loves Christ more than she loves him has found a precious stone that will indeed 
enrich his life. Be happy, you men, if your wife says you're number two. Be most happy if your wife loves the Lord more than she loves you. You know, perhaps I may have given this lesson the wrong title. The title is, What Do Christian Women and Men Want? Maybe I should have entitled it, What God Wants Christian Women and Men to Want. I say this because most men and women, Christian or not, don't usually know what they want. And many times they want the wrong things. So if you start wanting in a man or a woman what God wants you to want, then your eyes are going to be open to possibilities you never knew were there. And if you start being the woman or being the man God wants you to be, then your heart will begin to open up to feelings and opportunities you never knew were there as well. Remember, the only one who wants you to be alone and to stay alone is Satan. He's the only one that wants you to be alone so that he can more easily attack you and seduce you into the world. Paul even refers to teachers that in some way tell people that they are forbidden to marry. He calls their teaching doctrines of demons in 1 Timothy chapter 4. It is God who says, it is not good for the man to be alone, Genesis 2.18. However, he wants you to want what is right and good for you in another person. And so God bless you all, married, single, unmarried. God bless you as you discover what Christian women and Christian men really want and what they have to offer. Also, pray for those who are seeking a mate, that God will bring into your lives a Christian man or woman who will be a blessing to you and cause you to praise and thank God all the days of your life. So at this time, if you have a need for ministry, ministry of the church of any kind, whether it is to confess Christ and be baptized or to be restored to faithful service, maybe just a prayer to become a better husband, a better wife, maybe just a better potential candidate for marriage. Whatever your need, the church is gathered, our elders are here, ready to minister to you as we stand and as we sing our song of encouragement.